Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio up here at Slamdance slash Sundance up here in Park City. Uh, Peter Baxter, mate, 19 years? Is that what we're talking? We're talking about 19 years. It's pretty amazing. And um, I mean, obviously you guys are as much an institution up here as, as Sundance at this point. And the fact is that you guys continue to innovate and add things. We personally, as Beyond Cinema, we're really thankful that you added the Beyond category. So we kind of felt like we got some good branding in there somehow. But talk to me about trying to continue to innovate and change things up at Slamdance. Well, we've, what we've been trying to do at Slamdance actually over the last few years is expand um, uh, this brand, if you like, that we've created online. And I think as a festival, we've always put the filmmaker first. Yeah. And I think that what you can expect from Slamdance in the next few years to follow is a really an expansion into the online world and we really, really would like to see, not actually just with Slamdance, but festivals themselves embracing uh, what online can do for uh, filmmakers like the ones we have at Slamdance this year. Yeah. So that's going to be really important for us, I think, in the coming years. And one way that we've done that this year is to actually introduce uh, the Slam Collective. Right. Uh, the Slam Collective has made a, f a film called I Want to Be an American. And uh, it's based on the Cirrhosis Parlor game called Exquisite Corpse. Yeah. But instead of words, we've used central images, which we shared with one another, to yeah. create kind of a global uh, DIY filmmaking uh, production, really. A, and so like a got, chain mail, like a, a tele, like a broken telephone almost, in a sense, as well. Yeah, it's a little like that. And we've involved Standouts alumni for the first one. And so as well as showing that here at the festival, we're also now showing it online. And I think it shows that um, as a collective, what you can do online, it shows, it, obviously it's an experiment. We don't yeah. know whether it's going to succeed or fail, but what we're trying to do is push the boundaries, not only about what a documentary feature can be, but also how we can, as a, as a slam collective, really push out and find a bigger audience for our film. Yeah. And, that's going to be very important to stand out in the future, and this is a, sort of a way forward for us. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, obviously, there's some notable alum in the in the pocket in the back pocket of Slam Dance as well, and then you've also got this amazing kind of organically grown thing that is this screenplay competition that's led to some pretty amazing movies over the last few years. You know, obviously there was Neo Ned like way back when, with and that was kind of one of the best examples of Jeremy Renner's work before a lot of people knew him. Um, but having the Woodsman and then and Nicole Castle doing that, and this year having Jugface turned around within 12 months of last of winning last year's award, that's and then screening at the festival 12 months later, that's going to be inherently satisfying for you. Yeah, it is because of course you know you have these new writers coming through at Slam Dance, some of the writers you just you just said there, and so we have this low budget you know, horror film that won the screenplay competition, Jug Face, and Jack Kinkle's here with it. He also ended up directing it too, which is also, you know, great. We'd love to see that. Yeah. Um, we're showing that film later on today. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre because you guys stand for, or have been known to stand for first-time filmmakers. Of course, you're expanding that now with Beyond and stuff like that. But um, to have a guy win a screenplay competition and then manage to hold on to the film, you know, obviously a lot of people would have that taken away from them. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why this happened is because the producer has experienced Slam Dance and sees the spirit and the energy and the great things that can come out of the festival, and could have you know trusted uh, you know trusted Slam Dance and trusted obviously Chad in giving him the directing job. And on the screenwriting side as well, you've got a new thing this year for next year, where you're going to be offering a bunch of money. Can you talk to me about that and how that came about? Yeah, we really wanted to try and create a prize for the screenplay competition, sort of un unparalleled already, which was, yeah. you know, the ultimate prize that if you won, won it, the grand prize, not only would you get a cash, cash award, but you actually get your production made. And yeah. so we've partnered with Junto Box Films, and it really is an incredible opportunity for writers around the world to submit to this competition. And if you win this grand prize, you actually truly get your film film made. Um, Junto's had you know events pop up over the last couple of years uh, but they're really a kind of a new player to this whole kind of social marketing slash funding world. Does it help for you in terms of like agreeing to partner with another brand that's a lot newer than yours knowing that someone like Forrest Whitaker is involved in that brand or does that does that weigh into it at all? Yeah, what it does, and it's a you know that's obviously there's a there's a huge there's a huge trust there between both companies, 
um, they're relying on you know us finding these uh, these these you know these these great screenplays. But you know, of course, we've proven that we have over now a num number of years. Yeah. And I think Junta Box Films has now established themselves, even though they're a younger company, as as really trying to support emerging filmmakers. So it's a really it's a great it's a great fit for us both. And on a personal note, Gravitas Ventures had an announcement this week. They picked up a few films out of Slamdance, of course, including one of yours, Wild in the Streets, which I saw last year, thanks to you. Um, and, you know, saw it pop up at a couple of festivals over the year. Um, so that must be, uh, what does that mean for your film in terms of having this kind of new digital platform as well for your, you know, for an audience for you? Well, I think Gravitas have, you know, um, slowly but surely over the last few years proven themselves as a great distributor, and I think now they're the leading independent distributor uh, for Warner Brothers. And uh, fortunately for Wild in the Streets, it's also going to go through the Warner Brothers cable out outlets as well. So it's a really, that's a great, you know, you know great beginning just for 2013 to have landed that distribution deal. Yeah. And also for these two other Slamdance films at the festival this this year. And uh, I think it just goes to show you the strength of the, you know, the films that are coming through um, Slamdance this year. That that has already already happened, and we haven't even completed the festival. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what I like to see as well is this kind of every year we see these faces kind of grow. I mean, we had Drake Doremus come in here a long time ago for Spooner, and look at him now. Like he made a movie every year, and he's now really at the top of his game. But you guys were there to foster that whole that whole relationship. Um, and then, of course, we've had people coming in here like Sonia Kinski, who's Natasha Kinski's daughter, who's just done five films in the last two years, and the Jugface crew, who've kind of gone from the woman to Jugface and um, doing some interesting stuff. So obviously, the people at Slam Dance have got a, a good eye for talent still, and uh, and so exciting things happening. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why we do Slam Dance. We're very passionate about our filmmakers, and there are a lot of programmers up here this year to support the filmmakers this year. And of course, one of the great stories last year is not actually doesn't hasn't come from a feature film maker. It's come from a short film maker. Um, and I'm glad you're talking about these great success stories that you know have happened for the features. But let's not forget those shorts. Andrew Huang, who won the Experimental Award last year with Solipsis, I'm not sure if you saw that, mm -hmm. but a really amazing piece of work that took a long time to create. So, you know, we provided a showcase for him here at Slam Dance. He got a lot of press and media about that film. It won the award. A lot of people noticed it, including Bjork, and she gave him a job to direct her next video. Oh, cool. And uh, that, that premiered um, in September, I think, in 2012. And that guy now is just busy all the time, you know, creating and making films. So that's one example, you know, if, even if you're a short filmmaker, of how suddenly things can change for the better. And we, we love those stories, and really that's what Sam Lance lives, lives for, yeah. is, is, is to support filmmakers like Andrew, get to that next stage. Yeah, exactly. Some of the best documentaries, like Dear Zachary, I've ever seen, came from Slam Dance. And of course, Paranormal Activity, that's all another story, right? But um, yeah, so thanks for coming in, man. Always a pleasure to chat with you, and congrats on all the kind of new things you guys got going on. Well, thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me.